Okay, so this is the final official video in the series. There will be more to follow, which will be about extending the experience for your Gatsby application or improving the WordPress editing experience. But this is, for now, the foundations of this course. Um, the final video, which we're going to be doing now, covers forms in Netlify. So in my general template, you might have noticed that I have a contact form in all of my pages, which uses a contact component, which we'll look at now. And the contact component uses a ton of state um, variables. This could be you know, condensed into one state variable, which has an object of these keys, but just for basic sense of you know editing, I've just created single variables. And underneath there, I've created a contact form component. And this contact form component basically just says, you know, on change of input, update the value of this variable, and the value is the current variable. Now, all that looks pretty straightforward. The only difference is when you're creating a Netlify form, you'll want to first off use data Netlify true on your form and data Netlify honeypot to set honeypot field. So the best way I can explain this is with the Netlify form documentation. So if we go to form setup, you can see this is uh, an example form that they give. And the only difference to a standard form is, as I already mentioned, a data Netlify field, which basically tells Netlify to listen out for any form submissions made using the form. Um, but I, I've got a couple of other JavaScript functions I want to do to the form, so we will handle it a little differently than just um, just using method post. Um, when using JavaScript, you'll want to make sure that you serialize all of your fields. So we have an on submit handle submit function, which in our contact um, in our contact component stops the form submitting. If the bot field um, doesn't equal nothing, then that means that a bot has tried to enter a value into that field. And so the form catches that and doesn't submit the entry. Um, that's the whole honeypot concept is create a field which is hidden. And if a value is entered, then there's usually a robot entering information into the form. And so it's probably, probably spam. Um, after that, we're encoding the information and then passing it into a form name called contact. And if all goes well, we set it to true. If not, we alert the user to an error. Um, so yeah, back to the actual contact form. We have the data Netlify true. We have um, the name of the form as contact. And we have the honeypot as bot. And you can see here we have a bot field, which is type hidden, name bot, ID bot. And if somebody tries to change the value, then that's what stops the form submitting later on. So what does this look like in Netlify? Well, in Netlify, when you go to your project, um, romantic, co I'm not even going to try and pronounce it again. Um, if we go into the forms group, you can see we have some active forms. And the only one we have at the moment is contact. At the moment, we've got no submissions, but if we went ahead and went into our, our website, if I get rid of this preview bit, if we scroll down to the contact form and enter in some information, then when I click send, awesome, I've got the info. I'll send you an email in, in a few hours. And then when we go over to submissions, if we refresh, we have hi from Jack, and we have all of the fields that I've specified, serialized. So yeah, if you wanna set up your own form, I would go ahead and copy the Netlify example if you just wanna do a basic form submission. But if you wanna process the information a little differently and do some conditional logic, modify state, then I would definitely look into serializing the information in a callback function. 
So again, the callback function is handle submit, which is handled by the contact component. And in the contact component, we're basically encoding all of the fields using this encode function. So that's about it for the series. Um, if you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment in the description of the video, uh, in the comment section of the video, and I'll do my best to help you out.